MLR folks, the latest round, five games as we get towards the business end of the season. Uh, some pretty big results and um, yeah, a few teams I think in the likes of AG, uh, LA, New England are certainly standing out and um, unfortunately in that first game, it's kind of hard to say the same is true with ATL, man. LA going in there 31-19. They never really looked like losing this one, despite the fact that LA played a bunch of minutes with guys off the field. Hermache ends up getting a red card and had a couple of yellow cards as well. But ATL, man, at home. I mean, I love seeing big Johnny Ryberg score. I think he's like 30. Uh, I kind of wish that guy was a few years younger because, um, I don't know, there's just something about that big unit of a man uh, powering over the line. We'd like to see him, um, I don't know, maybe represent the Eagles at some point. But anyway... Uh, it's a try for the LA guys early. Um, Heaton also ended up getting one, which was pretty nice. It was like 10 points to five. Former Blues man, Jordan Trainer ends up getting a double. I feel like he's a little bit of a wasted talent from here in New Zealand, but I'm pleased to see him. Uh, I don't even know if he ever played for the Blues. He certainly played for Auckland, and he was in the Blues wider training squad, but he's getting his chance in, in LA, and he's, he's loving it, man. He combined with Dave Dennis uh, to get a pretty nice try. Half time, it's like 31-5, man. 31-5, but that being said, the rest of the points come from uh, come from ATL. Like I said, Hanko Homage getting a, a red card didn't help the LA cause, but um, yeah, ATL did punish them to get a few points back, but still, 31-19 ends up being pretty comfortable for the LA boys. So ATL will certainly look back on that first half with a bit of uh, regret, man. So 8-3 and three both sides, but form-wise, I guess uh, LA are looking a bit sharper, but they'll have to be sharp because they got AG next at home and uh the atl boys who've got utah should be looking to bounce back because utah haven't been in great form speaking of utah uh they played the free jacks who i think just broke the record right for a number of games won consecutively is it 10 in a row for uh for the new england boys 33 17 boy are they looking they just look on fire man two minutes mitch wilson goes over for their first try on the right wing they are just such a hard side man they can maul it as well. Their second try was a maul, so it's it's some big, nasty forwards combined with some pretty skillful backs, which is a pretty good combination if you're looking at a rugby team, man. I mean, Utah did get um, get one back before halftime. Makane had a big line break, so that was kind of pleasing. 21-10, it's not game over at that point. And um, Mano got one from a, uh, from a nice Utah cross kick, which made it, like at that point, 26-17 which is still close enough to, you know, two scores in, in 10 minutes, but um, uh, 73 or 75 minutes, New England have got a scrum close range, and uh, boom, fa, they go over to, to make it 33-17. So at home, keeping the home fans happy, 10-1, um, and one, man, quite a record. Utah, 2-9 and nine this season, probably can't come to a swift enough conclusion, which is disappointing because they were a good side um last year utah are home to atl like i mentioned and new england are home to dc dc have been on the buy dc have been kind of coming right in recent weeks but certainly up against the red hot new england team they will go in as massive underdogs so we will see um the next one the jackals still can't catch a trick man they get a wee bit of a hiding 53 14 against san diego i mean they were going a point per minute early with san diego and they got a yellow card dallas to make things worse it was like 15 nil after 15 minutes so not ideal but dallas did hit back after san diego got a yellow card um i forget the name of the winger he's a new guy they said it only arrived like a few days before so that's a good way to introduce yourself to the team uh, with a bit of a consolation try i guess um but i mean san diego hit back pretty quickly i think there's the halfback higgins i wondered why he didn't dot the ball down in the seven point zone because remember in the MLR they've got that zone behind the sticks that if you score it there it's seven points you don't need to worry about the conversion but it's smart play when they've got a yellow card to make them take the conversion because that can kill a little bit of extra time so um yeah smart play uh eat more of that yellow card time so 29-7 at half time Malkin ends up getting a double for um for San Diego with those malls Dallas finished the game with 13 players it's um it's a tough day at the office. So San Diego at 6-6 six and six are actually, I think, just in the playoffs at the moment. But um, they've got Seattle right on their heels. So we will see 
how things go. Dallas are obviously at the bottom of their group and they are um, away to Seattle next. So another team who will probably be looking to next year more than anything this year because it's not been the ideal first start for them. But at least they're in the league, right? The previous year they were supposed to be in and it ended up getting called off. So at least it's a start, if nothing else. Uh, New York get a win over NOLA, 36-28. A little bit concerning for the New York boys about how Nola kind of came back to make this one game on. I mean, Andy Ellis still loves a snipe. If you haven't seen the MLR recently, you can watch it for free on the Rugby Network. There's always a link down in the description for that one. It's not an affiliate link. It's just a free service. It's happy days if you want to see Andy Ellis and um, Pryor. Is it Kara? There's two Pryor brothers. I think it's Kara Pryor. He scores uh, another try. I think that's two in two weeks for him. So it's like 14-0. But um, Ed Fidel has got some proper wheels when Andy Ellis just hacks it upfield. Uh, under pressure, it's kind of a 14-point try, that one, because Nola were under heaps of pressure. Andy Ellis hacks it upfield, and Ed Fido, he's got some wheels, so he scored a great try. So like 28-7 at halftime, should be pretty much game over. Um, but Nola start their comeback. Stevens gets one to make it a 10-point deficit, 31-21. Elof gets one for Nola. It's 31-28, it's properly game on, but New York finish it with a mall try to kind of put it beyond doubt. So a bit of magic force that gets his second of the game. Good stuff for the New York boys. So seven and four is a pretty good record. Um, Nola at three and nine, not so much. Nola go on to the bye. And uh, Toronto await New York up in Canada for their next one. The last one, the lowest scoring of the games, AG and Seattle. Um, I only saw the highlights of this one, but they were pretty sparse. There wasn't a lot going on. Um, Seattle kicked the penalty on like 14 minutes. AG missed one. Um, Campbell ends up getting a couple of try assists. So it's like 14-6 at halftime. And there's a penalty in the second half. I mean, Seattle did miss a kick in the second half to at least bring the score a bit closer. But yeah, this one seems like it was uh, a bit of an arm wrestle with not that much going on. So it still seems like uh, the Free Jacks are kind of the all-conquering team at the moment. Can anyone stop them at the moment that kind of remains to be seen ag like i said will face la which will be interesting because they've already played once right didn't ag get the win in that one i'll have to go back and check the records and um seattle with dallas will be looking to get a big win as they chase down san diego but anyway folks it's been another good week uh of mlr look forward to see i think it's like four or five rounds to go before we get to the playoffs so it should be pretty interesting um but as i said certainly it's the free jacks it's la I mean, AG as well, who are looking kind of the form teams at the moment. We didn't see Toronto, DC, or Houston play this week, but um, they're still playoff spots up for grads. We'll see how they go. You guys let me know your thoughts, and um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.